So I'm joined here by Snehal from Zeiss. How's it going? We just wanted to catch up about like what Zeiss is doing here at Cinegear. I mean, of course it's about, you know, the, the Supreme Primes are, are a great thing to be able to check out and get your hands on here. Yep. See the new reel that you've got coming out. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, Zeiss is doing a lot more than just showing lenses here, right? Yeah, it's, uh, it's wonderful because of course we have uh, multiple workshops. So we did trainings for uh, if you're like going into a rental house and you want to look at lenses and stuff like that, like how to rental houses set up lenses to work with their cameras and back focusing issues and lens projection. So we, we were at Crozeal's boot, doing okay. a workshop on that, which okay. is really cool. And really teaching people that maybe are not used to like reading uh, lens projection to mm -hmm. see what that's like. But the really cool workshop that we had yesterday was about um, emerging cinematographers. Cinematographers that have been doing feature films, like independent features for years, are now transitioning into television. So we had Sandra was there, Adrian, Zachary, and they were just wonderful. It was so nice to hear their stories from a personal perspective of like, what are the challenges that they face, how much hardships they went through, working in the independent world, and how that translates, and how it makes it more nimble and easy to work with when it comes to television. Mm -hmm. It's almost like graduating to the next level and having the support that you need to get the job done. Having producers that understand you know, what equipment you really need and not arguing with you when you're like, no, I need one more lens set, right? right. Or like, and the other end of it, it's like having the ability to say, look, I'm gonna call for this equipment and not worry like, uh, should I ask to call for this equipment? Should mm -hmm. I ask for the techno crane? And be like, no, I can do it. Yeah, having the necessary. confidence. Yeah. yeah, and then also learning other things like in the independent world, you're working with one director and you have one vision. But maybe in television, you might have a few more people, like the network and stuff looking sure. over you. So they were telling us all kinds of truths. Like they told us like, hey, I can go to the color correction, but it doesn't mean that it's gonna look like that when it goes on TV. Right. Like that's really interesting to hear stuff like that. Right. Like creative control too, you kind of have to give up sometimes some things when you gain other things. So maybe you gain more control on set, but after when it gets to post, you might lose some control. It's so, like navigating those things and figuring out picking your battles and yeah. yeah and what the balance is and then also learning about all the hard work that they had to do and the many years of work they put in to kind of get to where they are now yep. and it's motivational for like the really the audience that was there because everyone's in that boat of trying to figure out how to make money at this yep. and you know make it work for them and it kind of like kind of makes you feel better when you understand the amount of commitment that it takes yeah kind of puts your own hard work in perspective yeah. To be able to see, okay, I, I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to keep at it. And that's yeah. exactly what they kept saying. It's yeah. like, if you stick with it, yeah. you're going to do it. If you stick with it, the yeah. opportunities will come because you've proven yourself. Yeah. And you always have to smile and you always have to be nice. At the same time, you work hard and make smart decisions and use your artistry. So yeah. that was really cool. Yeah. And then today we have another workshop. Yeah. And this workshop is about using of metadata because with the CP3 XD lenses and the Supreme Prime lenses that we have, you have communication with camera systems right. that not only communicate like focus and iris position, which we've seen before, but also lens shading and distortion characteristics, which are really used for visual effects right. to make sure the visual effects have the same shading and distortion characteristics as a lens to kind of make a match. And we're doing a proof of concept short film called Stucco and we're showing a work in progress cut today at four o'clock. And in, after the cut, we'll have a Q&A with the whole team from start to finish, from set to post, including the VFX uh, um, artists, the you know, e-film, which was involved in the DI process, uh, you know, Strawberry, who's the DIT on set, the director, uh, Janina, who's also the actress in the film. And everyone's gonna talk about what, how this all helped them, you know? Like, right. it made them not worry about stuff that would have just been a headache Right. instead of let them do more creative things. And that's how we got a more polished VFX out of it is because we'll do more creative things and worry about the rotoscoping and the small things like right. that, yeah. I mean, it's, it's crazy that as cameras get more advanced, the lenses are also just becoming so much more complex. Like at the Pacific Northwest Lens Summit, mm -hmm. they did a Zeiss Supreme Prime's Tear down. Yeah. Tear down class. Yeah, yeah. And it was like so intense, mm -hmm. the amount of complexity that goes into those lenses. Yeah. Um, I was just, I was just blown away. Um, you know, w one other thing that I've, I've heard a lot of people talking about, it's like, there's, there's so many lens options out there. Now it's a lot about, is it, is it consistent? Is it easy to use? Right. Is it going to give me repeatable results? You know? Absolutely. So uh, could we talk a little technical about the Supreme Primes and just the offering what primes are available mm -hmm. and you know kind of about that consistency across the whole set 
Yeah, that's very important. So for the time that uh, Zeiss spent working with Ari over like the last 82 years, these are some of the very exact lessons what you talked about mm -hmm. that we have learned and come, you know, both companies have done. Right. And in the past, you've noticed lenses like Super Speeds or Ultra Primes, especially in the Ultra Primes, a very consistent set of lenses. Focus and iris positions are exactly the same for the rings. <clears throat> so if you have like lens motors, you're not moving around everywhere. Yeah. Iris spins them of the same amount of degrees. Mm -hmm. um, you have the same type of housing and barrels. So physically, of course, they're more consistent, but also image-wise is the consistency in the image. Do we have like one focal length to another? If I change it, will there be a color shift? Right. Because there really shouldn't be. Right. Um, am I having the same T-stop? Because I don't want to keep relighting if I want to go in for a close-up. So having the consistent aperture, mm -hmm. all these things are very, very important. So of course- That's lessons, literally money. It's literally on set. That's time and that's money. Yeah, one T-stop yeah. is double the light. Right. People forget that, but that's right. a big deal. Right. So let's talk about what Supreme Primes does is put all these lessons together and take it to the next level. So now we have very consistent uh, coatings. We have a very consistent look, okay? That's good. Consistent T-stop with a T15. We're now offering nine lenses in the series. There'll be 13 altogether when we're finished, okay. but right now we have 21 to 135. So 21 and 135 are the newest offerings. You can see them here at the booth yeah. uh, and also at our office in LA or you know whenever we do other shows. But at the same time, uh, you have from 21 to 100, a very consistent set of T15 lenses. And of that, only the 135 is 114. The rest are all 95 front diameter. Focus nice positions, of course, exactly the same mm -hmm. between all those lenses. But tonally, they look the same. The right. look looks the same. Right. Uh, the bouquet looks the same. So really you get a nice match exactly what you're saying and this is what you pay for that's what a premium lens gives you right but we also take these lessons and bring it down to the cp level so if you go to the compact primes they're very consistent as well maybe not as consistent because you have the 15 18 21 or t29 and the rest are t21 so maybe the iris is not the exact same but still look wise <laughs> so in this case i could put a 15 18 21 and an 85 on the camera and 50 yep. on the camera 135 100 and all of them are not going to none of them are going to shift color temperature or exposures they're just all going to look very very similar to one another yep. so even there we're trying to go for consistency of course again consistency on size and shape all cp3s are all 95 front diameter they're all small lenses all weighing around three pounds so it's the same type of thing that we do in the larger lenses, the more expensive lenses we also do on the CP level. Very good. Yeah. Well, it's it's really been nice to see you know Zeiss giving back and kind of uh, investing in the education of people here at Cine Gear. Yeah. And great to hear about the lenses as well. So thanks so much, Nahal.